100 miles from the Korangal Valley, the mountains in Kabul are covered in snow in February 2009. Once a trading post on the Silk Road, Kabul remains a bustling city of 5 million. But now the streets are tense. A week before, the Taliban killed 20 people here. Kabul feels like it's under siege. The Taliban move freely in the city. In a Kabul apartment, I meet a Taliban commander, Mullah Zahid. He arrives unarmed, but with two deputy commanders. Their demeanor was cold. They told me I was sitting too close to them. The Taliban find infidels disgusting. What does the Taliban want? Why are you fighting? Our objective, he says, is to collapse the government and take over Kabul. But there can be peace, he claims, if U.S. troops leave Afghanistan. Otherwise, we are growing stronger and we will expand our operations, he says. And we were about to see these weren't idle threats. Back with Viper Company, we return to the Korangal in late May 2009. Roger. Seven months have passed since our last visit. But the soldiers are still hunting the Taliban and using themselves as bait. What's the point of this patrol? This time, right platoon now, leader Justin going. Smith commands a mission, a four-hour march with just a dozen men. His mission is to clear the Taliban out of the village of Laniel. But as usual here, Smith knows he's walking into a trap that local elders tipped off the Taliban. And do you think the enemy knows you're coming? Yeah, they do. But walking because... into a potential ambush is still the only sure way to find the Taliban and draw them out of cover. In Laniel, the troops set up in a destroyed house, high on a hillside. The soldiers are right to be suspicious. Within minutes, they're attacked. Go! Go! We're taking heavy fire from... Sergeant Christopher Thompson is wearing a camera on his helmet. Fire to the left of the draw! Now! As he's recording, so are we. A rarely seen perspective. Multiple simultaneous angles inside a firefight. Thompson uses his personal helmet camera to watch the videos and improve his skills. Right, we're going to suppress that area. Suppress! The images look like a video game. But it's deadly real. I'm going in. Watch out. I'm going in. In 11 months, Viper Company has been in more than 500 firefights. An average of more than one of these Christ Almighty. every day. Now the experience is paying off. They're faster, more precise, and more lethal than when we first met them. Roger. Let's get two rounds of HE down there, okay? While I struggle to figure out where the bullets are coming from, the troops quickly identify the 10 or so Taliban attacking in teams of two. You guys taking fire from how many directions? One, two. Right. Over. They're hitting our wall over there. They were bouncing right off you here? Yeah, yeah. They might be shooting right there! Fire! Keep low! The soldiers have also learned to block out emotion, focus, and manage their heart rates and adrenaline. The best way I can describe that is you have a, like an extreme alerted sense. Right? really alert to what's going on. Everything that's moving around you, every sound you hear is just drawing your attention. Recon, take care of a flying rocket! And it feels like you're just processing things in your brain much faster. The soldiers fire rockets and grenades. You got eyes on. They call in air support and more than 40 mortars. The Taliban are close. Their fire accurate. They've gotten better, too. They've been taking incoming rounds from at least two positions on this hilltop. Some of the rounds were bouncing right off these rocks around us. Now they're trying to put out as much fire as they can to try and cut the attackers. But the soldiers fire so much, ammunition Keep is running low. Slow your rate of fire! Conserve the ammo! The troops think they kill three or four Taliban fighters. Cease fire! Cease fire! <laughs> And after an hour, this firefight is over. You can see where some of the rounds were hitting. These black spots are where the bullets were smacking against the rock. 
Now the soldiers are trying to figure out how to get out of here. But so many close calls have taught Viper Company it's as important to be lucky as good. Hey, you see those? This fight, like, people don't understand. Like, looking at you, are like, oh, no Americans got wounded. Like, uh, my gunner, Oxman, he was taking rounds right over his head. Like, they were cracking easily six inches over his head. See where the smoke is? The gray smoke? Shoot it! So this could have turned into, you know, a situation where we lost American lives. The fact that we came out on top is excellent. I always think about afterwards how uh, how close we came to being a disaster. The soldiers consider this mission a success, but there's no celebration or bravado, not anymore. Viper Company has lost eight men out here, 30 have been wounded. And after the firefight in Laniel, the soldiers still have to march back to base, down narrow canyons, even wading through shallow rivers. Our cameraman, Bredden Edwards, collapses from exhaustion and dehydration. He needs an IV. How are you feeling? Why well, am I the one that's always getting injured? <laughs> the soldiers think it's funny. It happened to them a lot in the beginning. We all give Bredden a hard time. The third person to get an IV is sitting right there. Who is he? Is? Yeah. Were the other women and children? No, no, not one of our guys. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Good to see you. But the next morning, there's serious work to do. Captain Howell, Viper Company commander, holds a meeting with Korangal's elders. It's a very tough situation for you. Howell wants to know who told the Taliban American soldiers would be in Laniel. Howell suspects it's an elder named Zareen. The Taliban were using Zareen's nephew's house as a base. Zareen, you know which building I'm talking about, the, the one all the way on the top? But Zareen denies it. I asked Howell if the meetings and fighting and eight deaths are accomplishing anything. Is holding this valley, this remote valley, worth that sacrifice? Worth those American lives? We've done tremendous damage, I think, to the enemy here. It's not necessarily for me to decide, um, but I think with what we've done, um, it's absolutely been worth it. Howell measures success by the level of violence. It's down from three attacks a day to a few a week. We've gotten a lot better than we were when we were first here. We've been able, quite frankly, to kill more in the last couple months than we had in our first few months here. Everything went good. Nobody's hurt. Successful so. mission? Yep, definitely a successful mission. But the fighting comes at an incredible cost, both physical and psychological. Scars the soldiers are just starting to recognize. 